Fellas, just like last league, it's time for me to judge if Metamorph was a good league. In this video, we're gonna dip into the league mechanics and point to the positives and negatives about Metamorph League. I won't talk about Conquerors of the Atlas as much, if at all, because Conquerors is the expansion that we're gonna keep replaying until next year's, or whenever that may be. We're just gonna be focusing on Metamorph League. Now that we know that Metamorph is going core and that the new league's name is Delirium, and it's going to expand on the skill tree while also implementing its own spice to the regular game, the Path of Exile content is going to ramp up in complexity and craziness yet again. So if you're into Path of Exile or listening to the ramblings of yet another dude playing the game, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Coming back to the topic at hand, don't take this video as me putting the nail on Metamorph's coffin claiming it dead. No, this video is just my take on whether or not it was a good league. Besides that, I was just waiting on GGG's plan for implementing Metamorph's mechanics into the game to put this video out. Since that happened this week, it's time to analyze the goods and the uglies when it came to Metamorph League. First, we're gonna begin by talking about the league's mechanics. For that, we must talk about the NPC, Tan Octavius. Tan follows the doctrine of his late master, both teacher and owner, of researching the intrinsic darkness present in all beings, with the goal of finding a way of removing it completely. Because of that, Tan requires you to engage with his two thing after every zone. In every zone, certain monsters are going to be marked with a green flare or on your map, and those are gonna drop an organ when defeated, including the area's boss who owns the most important organ in that zone. When no more samples are available, or you feel like fighting the metamorph, Tan will appear with his biggest test tube to help you create a concoction of monsters from the organs collected in that zone, which you will then fight and if you are successful on defeating, earn lots of loot. If the tube meter was filled and the boss organ used, you'd earn a unique organ with random rewards that could be combined with other unique organs in Tain's lab for even more loot, if you could beat them. The rule was that you couldn't take previous zones organs and mix them with another ones. Organs were tied to a single area and once that area was left behind, so were the organs that were not used. To make the league rewarding, some organs had specific rewards if chosen when creating your metamorph. Combining multiple organs of the same reward type will often maximize profits. Granted, it still required some luck, but it was possible to get rewarded handsomely quite regularly. To balance the piñata's loot, organs also came with properties that boosted the health, damage, speed, accuracy or defenses of the metamorph. Besides the mods, organs also came with unique attacks that boosted the lethality and danger of metamorphs. Of course, the juiciest organs tended to be tied to the hardest bosses, difficulty and reward was balanced accordingly, though some will argue that fighting metamorphs in Tan's lab was infinitely easier than regular mapping, since the lab doesn't have area modifiers unlike maps, where harder map mods ramp the encounter's difficulty considerably. Besides that, metamorph introduced yet another currency type in the form of catalysts. Catalysts applied quality on amulets, rings and belts and came in different flavors. These flavors augmented the potency of the related mods. Just by looking at what they did, you probably know which ones were sought after the most. As they are quality currency, they are tied to the same rules as regular quality currency, in the sense that a normal item requires 4 catalysts to achieve 20% quality, a magic item requires 10 and a rare slash unique requires 20. Catalyst quality can also be consumed when applying certain currency to items, improving the odds of receiving mods related to the quality type. This means that when you get a mod related to the quality type, you have to reply the desired quality on the item to improve the stats of the specific mods. Besides Catalysts, Metamorph also introduced 4 new unique items, though if I'm being honest, I never saw one drop. So, with all of that out of the way, it's time to talk about the positives. Metamorph is a simple league mechanic. Clear the map or area, earn your organs automatically, create the metamorph with your own organ choices, fight it, defeat it, profit. Rinse and repeat. The only management came from the boss organs and that could sometimes get out of hand, or in this case, stash tabs. Metamorphs were created according to player choice, in the sense that everyone picks their poison and chooses how to fight it. This means that it was your choice whether to fight a simple no damage morph or some ungodly, unrelating, unyielding monstrosity. Making the metamorph harder meant making it more rewarding, though if I'm being honest, it eventually felt like there was a stealth nerf to how rewarding some metamorph encounters had become. Metamorph reward choices, while the morph often exploded in rare items, I greatly appreciate the fact that you could learn a multitude of that could actually have some value. I like that you could farm incursion rares, blighted maps and oils, bridge stuff, legion splinters, scarabs, divination cards, etc. I really like that and I hope to see more of that in upcoming leaks. 
The implementation of organ sucking was a godsend. When the leak released, there was a sudden realization that the cases on Carpal Tunnel were about to skyrocket. Because you had to collect every single goddamn organ dropped by monsters, those were extra clicks that to be honest got old pretty quickly. Luckily, GGG dropped a patch soon afterwards which made organs get sucked instantly and that made the leak mechanic a hell of a lot more enjoyable. The catalysts are a great addition to the game and for those who like min maxing the freak out of their characters there is no reason not to invest into using them especially considering that they improve the odds of receiving useful mods when exiled slamming your items, and these slams also affected Conqueror exiles which is actually pretty cool. The challenges were pretty accessible. This time around the challenges are easier, there is no denying that and I personally think that's a great thing because their accessibility and reduced difficulty allows for more people to acquire the free MTX stuff. Sure, not all the MTX stuff from challenges looks amazing but it's still a reward that motivates people to keep playing, hopefully we see this level of accessibility on challenges going forward. Now that the positive stuff is over, we can talk about the ugly stuff. Visibility. This is one of the biggest negatives because it got pretty bad at one point and to be honest I didn't pay attention to whether or not it got fixed. I just focused on taking out morphs as fast as I could. The black goo on the ground, while getting thrown black stuff at you, while also dodging black monsters and dark colored damage over time effects or other ground effects, while also getting chased by the dark colored roided up boss amalgamation got a bit frustrating here and there. While you can argue that everyone picks their poison and it's your fault for allowing the metamorph to become a bucket of paint, dropping black paint everywhere, it still doesn't remove the fact that it felt quite cheap to die to stuff that it's not clearly shown on the screen. This is a personal one, but holy crap, Nemesis rares on Metamorph encounters are a big fat no, especially getting allies cannot die. While there's a crap ton of Sculpey clay monsters and the Metamorph around is surely a nice way of lower the life expectancy of your preferred platform components. It isn't funny to find an immortality shrine and forget what good frame rate looks like, and it isn't funny to fight a decently challenging monster while it spawns monsters that apply that same experience during the fight. Metamorph rewards often meant a billion rares alongside your loot. The topic of rare items being worthless is something that is discussed often in the Path of Exile community and Metamorph encounters were filled with rare drops to the point where I often found myself resetting Tan's lab because I couldn't be asked to pick up and vendor every single rare or else I would accidentally click on one while fighting a Metamorph there and that meant getting in trouble. While you can argue that this is fixed by installing a more strict filter, it doesn't stop the fact that rare items were abundant and not everyone has the patience to check one by one to see if they're useful or worth something. Metamorph difficulty often meant choosing one of three routes, having a tanky character that could take it slow and live throughout the encounter, having a character that nuked the metamorph as soon as it spawned or ignoring the encounter completely. This is mostly an individual thing as the experience varies for everyone because you build the encounter on your own accord. Luckily most if not all of my characters showcased on the channel were able to beat morphs comfortably, but I did come across situations where the former three choices were the only choices. I agree on these difficult situations of red map tiers and beyond, in the initial maps though I don't know about that one. However, that's it for the negatives, at least from my point of view and experience. So now that we know that Metamorph is going core, we know that it's getting scarabs that guarantee the encounter and greatly improve the reward payout. But was Metamorph a good league? One thing that we can all agree on is that it was a pretty simple league, one that didn't require a lot of brain power. It was a league that didn't need constant management like Delves Sulfite and Ashurite or Legion Incubators and Splinters. You just needed to clear a map and in turn you got to fight your bonus loot piñata. In that sense, yes, it was pretty good, especially when paired up with the 3.9 expansion Conquerors of the Atlas. Personally, while I did enjoy profiting from the league mechanic early on, I do believe that it got a bit boring towards the last month of the league. I felt like I had seen and experienced everything Metamorph had to offer. While I did keep engaging with the encounter, in some cases I ended up skipping it altogether, especially when the organ rewards were whack. Thankfully that may change a bit with the introduction of the Scarab model for Metamorph encounters, but we're gonna have to wait and see. So my final verdict is a solid 4 out of 5 bananas. And that's it for today's topic. There's still a lot of time before the Lyrium League. As I said somewhere in a recent video, I'll be posting something else until that league drops. What? I don't know. But I'm leaning towards maybe some Torchlight 2 just because after seeing gameplay of Wolsen, I crave pistol gameplay on an action RPG and I don't know, we'll see. Maybe something else to kill the time until we know life another league starts. So with that said, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video, and if you made it this far and you're not subscribed yet, hey, I'm just saying it's free and you should totally do it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and hopefully I'll be able to do another one of these for next league as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Peace out.